Hi, so I've been away for a couple of weeks teaching martial arts in Tuscany. Very nice that was too. But now I'm back and it's time for the next video blog. You may remember in episode one, I mentioned that I first read Robert Howard and Conan as a teenager in the early 70s with the Sphere paperbacks. At that time, we were also reading comics of two, of course, and Marvel UK were putting out weekly titles. Uh, we used to get Spider-Man, uh, Dracula Lives, Planet of the Apes, and they also did a UK version of The Savage Sword of Conan uh, as a weekly. That was with art by the great Barry Windsor Smith. It didn't last too long, and I think it was merged with the uh, Avengers Weekly at some point. But I do remember going into a newsagent and seeing uh, an American issue of the Savage Sword of Conan. And this was something totally different. This wasn't like a comic, this was a magazine. It had letters pages, it had features, it had articles. Now at that time it was quite difficult to get these. Obviously this is in the prehistoric age, pre-internet. So the only chance you had of getting these was if you could find a news agent that stocked them and that often took some finding. They did release a UK version of SSOC but um, that was I think the late 70s, maybe around 77, 78, something like that. I of course bought all, or most of those and I've got them in a collection in, in various boxes scattered around the house. So it was very nice to see a few years back and I believe they've just printed the last uh, collection, Dark Horse put out the complete collection of the Savage Sword of Conan. So this is from issue one which started in 1974 and it ran up to 1995, 235 issues uh, in all. The first issue starts with Barry Smith and Roy Thomas' adaptation of Frost Giant's Daughter, it's the first story, and the second story is Red Nails. For me Red Nails is the best Conan story, or at least in the top three, and I think this Smith Thomas adaptation is the finest example of Conan in comic form. So already in that first edition you've got two classic stories and the artwork throughout is of a very high standard, whether it's Barry Windsor Smith or John Buscema who later took over most of the Conan artwork. SSOC also had some great cover artists, Earl Norum, Bob Larkin, Joe Jusco, Doug Beekman, and of course you get one of those reproduced on the front of every edition. The, uh, the covers for each issue are reproduced inside but in black and white, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, it would have been nice to have those as a colour splash, but I guess production wise that would have increased costs. So obviously there's a limited pool of Robert E. Howard Conan stories, so the SSOC collection does get into pastiche territory pretty quick, whether it's El Sprague de Camp or Roy Thomas or other people adapting Robert E. Howard stories or creating their own Conan stories. Now it has to be said the quality of those does vary. Uh, in some places they're very good. Uh, in others they do get a little cheesy and a, a little monotonous in tone in terms of fight the monster, get the girl, kill the evil wizard. So as you go on through the volumes, the quality of, of stories can drop a little. But I have to say the artwork is never anything less than good, and in some cases it's exceptional. There are also some real gems in the pastiche stories as well, uh, particularly issue 176, The Three Deaths of Conan, uh, which is kind of like a, a tarot reading under duress, and each of those three deaths is illustrated by a different artist. There's a very nice uh, Innsmouth type section in there which uh, crosses back to our Lovecraftian interest of course. Then there's uh, issue 185, Mask of the Demon, which was uh, quite an M.R. Jamesian cast in the runes type story. Also great artwork and uh, a neat little tale as well. And another one I particularly liked was in issue 211 onwards, it was a prequel to Red Nails and that had some great artwork by Raphael Kanan, very reminiscent of Barry Smith but with his own twist on it. That was, a, that was a nice collection of stories as well. So overall, if you want to stick to the purely Robert E. Howard material, I'd look at the first maybe five or six volumes. You get the stories, you get that great artwork 
and the covers as well. And for me it's nice because they're all collected in one place. If I want to uh, read my old SSC issues I have to rummage around under the stairs, get the box out, find the issue and so on. These are great because you can just put them on your shelf, grab one when you want, flick through, browse or look for a particular story. So these have been published by Dark Horse who have also produced their own conographic novel over the last few years. That started off very well I thought, up until about volume 12 then we got into the very disappointing Queen of the Black Coast issues. The artwork changed, the writing changed, and I don't feel it's, it's picked up a little since then, but I still don't feel, looking at the, the modern style of artwork that is maybe more computer generated, I still don't think it holds up compared to the old Barry Windsor Smith days, or John Buscema, or any of the other artists in the old SSOC. So this is artwork and stories that I come back to time and time again. Whereas if I find the more modern artwork, I tend to maybe read once or twice and that's it. So of course you can buy these on Amazon or in your local comic store. They retail for around £15 each. For a Conan or Robert E. Howard fan, I would say they're, they're a must-have, especially those first maybe eight volumes. After that, it depends very much on your feelings about pastiche. Personally, I enjoy it. Even the, the, the most cheesy ones can still be entertaining in a way. And as I said, the artwork is uniformly high standard throughout. So, well worth adding to your library. So, I mentioned the Marvel UK Weekly Savage Sword of Conan with the Barry Windsor Smith artwork. Uh, a couple of those issues had a crossover story with Conan and Elric, Michael Moorcock's take on the sword and sorcery hero, or perhaps anti-hero. That's what we're going to be looking at next time. I'll be reviewing the first two volumes in an Elric graphic novel series. Please don't forget to subscribe and share to our channel. And also, check out our new website at innsmouthgold.com. That's just been newly revamped, a lot of new information on there. And also a link to our recently set up Twitter account as well. So you can get in touch with us via Twitter now also. Until next time, take care. And don't pray to Crom, he never listens. Mm -hmm.